Uh, welcome everyone to the uh, Transmart Foundation training program. Uh, this today is actually our June class, but uh, we had to delay it, so we're ending up uh, holding this class today in uh, July. Uh, this is part of uh, all uh, a monthly training program that we offer uh, for anyone who would like to join. Um, and you can see the topics here that we cover, uh, ranging from <clears throat> Transmart for Beginners, um, uh, to uh, loading data, advanced workflows, uh, data science with uh, using Transmart, uh, etc. Uh, and today we have a, a special class uh, for the first time that we're offering, um, thanks to Thomson Reuters and uh, Giannis Pandas, who will be presenting on uh, the ETL tutorial on the ETL data data loader uh, from Thomson Reuters. Um, just a few notes uh, that I'd like to points I'd like to cover. Uh, as I said, this is uh, this training classes are held monthly. They are recorded, and the recordings are on our website, so you can review it later or uh, suggest your colleagues join uh, watch it if uh, if you find it useful, which we hope you will. Um, <clears throat> logistically, this is a go to webinar, so uh, if you have a question, uh, you have a few choices. You can raise your hand. Uh, I will be monitoring throughout the session. Uh, while Yanni's presenting the class. Uh, you can also uh, send a note through the chat window or uh, ask a question. Uh, we will get to all the questions uh, during the session uh, and I'll try to get them in uh, as appropriate as uh, soon as we can. And also there will be uh, open questions at the end. Um, to get us started, uh, I have a couple of questions, uh, polls that I'd like to ask uh, the group just to get us an idea of uh, where uh, you know, if, if you, uh, what you know about uh, Transmart. Uh, so the first question should be on your screen. Uh, have you used the Transmart platform before? Uh, I would like to get an idea of how many of you actually already know the platform. Um, and I expect today's class uh, are, uh, in, and it is coming through uh, as I expected uh, previously, uh, generally about three quarters of you who come to these classes have not used the platform before because it's often been uh, for beginners. And today it's, it's the opposite. We've got about 90% of you uh, already know uh, the platform. Uh, and so that's, uh, that's great. Uh, thank you for that. And then one other quick question. Uh, I'd like to have an idea of how you'll use the platform. Uh, are you the actual user and gonna be using it as part of your research? Uh, are you supporting people within your company? Uh, are you do, using this as part of an academic research or training program, or are you a vendor uh, who supports uh, customers? Uh, <clears throat> and uh, basically about half of you are uh, coming here from a company supporting users in your company. A third are about from the uh, academic community and the remainder from vendors. That's great. So thank you for helping us with that. Okay, so um, without any further delay, I'd like to turn it over to Yanni, who will um, present the course on uh, ETL uh, data loader. Yanni, I'll make you presenter. Thanks, Rudy. There you go. Is it coming through? Is it coming yeah. through? Looks good. Yes. Excellent. Just put it into full screen. Okay, so thank you very much for the introduction, Rudy. And just on, on the, one of the points that you mentioned, um, I welcome questions throughout the, the duration of the tutorial. So please don't hesitate to interrupt me and ask a question which may be pertinent at, uh, at a specific time. So <clears throat> firstly, I'd like to help uh, to thank Natalia from, from, our, from our company and uh, Sermon for the help that they gave me on producing and preparing this tutorial. And so the, what I would like to cover um, today is I would like to, um, to um, for the users, uh, for, the, for the attendees to understand what the process of translation data curation is and why it's important. And looking at the poll, um, I don't think I need to dwell on that too much um, since most of the people are vendors or academics who understand the, 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 the value. Um, I'd like to introduce everyone to the TM Data Loader, our ETL tool, 
Um, I'm going to go through and um, explain to you how you can install um, TM Data Loader on your instance. Um, and then I'm going to go through actually uh, uh, doing uh, extract, downloading um, a, a gene expression omnibus public study, um, transforming the files so they're prepared for loading. Actually load them, well we're not going to do it live because it would take too long, but I'm going to show you how you would exactly launch the TM data loader and load, and also finally how you can actually test if the study was loaded correctly. So there are some uh, notes and expectations from this, and maybe not all of them have fulfilled, but um, I, I hope you understand. So at the moment, um, the, this tutorial was um, prepared and run on a Transmart 16.1 instance running on a Postgres uh, database. And um, this was actually done by, this was installed um, on a virtual machine on my, on my computer using the install instructions released by the Transmart Foundation. So very easy to install, just the scripted um, install scripts. And uh, just to uh, note that this uh, tutorial was run on an Ubuntu 14.04 desktop operating systems system, and for the for this uh, tutorial, other um, other operating systems will not be covered, just in the interest of, of time. Um, and the expectation is that users have a basic understanding of Linux command line. Although I hope you you figure that um, it's actually been been um, Quite prescriptive in the tutorial, so even people with not uh, with even with even less than basic understanding of Linux command line should be able to perform this. So let's start off. Why curate, or what is the what is the end goal of curation? So essentially, I'm, I'm using one of the um, one of the gene expression omnibus public studies as an example. The reason why we want to curate this and put it into a, a structured format is so we're able to ask um, questions of the data set and get to answer our scientific um, queries. So essentially, we will what we what the aim is um, is to go from something that you would see on Geo um, like this to a structured uh, to structured format within Transmart. So. Question, additional questions can be asked on it, and throughout this uh, throughout this tutorial, I will be using the GSC twenty five zero six six study, which was um, a breast cancer stem study run by microarray using microarrays um, to understand the um, the response and the survival following neoadjuvant. Um, Taxane androgen chemotherapy in breast cancer patients. So, our approach to uh, to data curation and within Transmart. So we we uh, we deploy a semi-automated transformation upload workflow where we we would typically collect all of the different data types in the translational research space. So clinical data, omics data, as well as metadata. We we um, we perform. This is the, um, the the a little bit of the, the manual step where we have to uh, make sure that we uh, produce the transformation scripts pertinent to these to the the data that we're dealing with. We map all of the variables into ontologies and map them across the study so they can so the studies can then can be comparable with one another. And we then we also provide the transmart uh, folder structure mapping file. Which we all then place into this ETL directory, um, and then launch our tool to load it into Transmart database. So compared to some of the other um, ETL tools that I've used, uh, namely the um, the native Kettle scripts as well as the Sanofi Ice tool, uh, this um, this ETL is based uh, purely on just placing all of the data into a directory and launching the tool rather than, it doesn't have that much parameterization within, but only parameters that which are pertinent for the curation study. I mean, this is, this is something that I wanted to um, mention. TM Data Loader was, um, was created with the, with the whole uh, curation in, in mind, so the whole curation process. So the the typical uh, the typical curation workflow we gather and, and the files on all the information, 
Um, we, we review the study information. Uh, we prepare all the data. We review and QC the data. We plan to transform it if needed. We perform the VAT mapping variables, as I said before, and then load it into the database. So, our ETL tool. Um, the, how does it, uh, this R tool compare to other ETL tools? And I'm using a slide which was uh, produced by Yannicka and Weibo from the Hive and was presented in one of the previous sessions and the link to the, to the YouTube is down here. So compared to the, to compared to the for example, the, the, uh, the basic ETL scripts, it can cover the majority of the data types as well as um, apart from the cross trial mapping at the moment we can see that uh, apparently the, the tool by the, the Hive can actually um, address that. But it pretty much covers all of the data and I do need to uh, provide a quick update because this slide was produced a few months ago. So as, as, as far as uh, GWAS um, data goes, we've actually implemented a full plink data support, so full slip uh, genotype data to be loaded uh, as binary data into the database, into the database, as well as it can be lo loaded with a TM data loader, and you can now run a de novo GWAS um, using Transmart. So, our experience in, uh, in curation, um, and just, just to show you how, what the, the reason why we designed the tool the way we did, um, it's coming from actual experience of loading very large um, scale studies. Um, some of these examples, and um, this, was a, this was curation was initially done by Ceremon, where um, the ADNI and PPMI data sets were were curated in a partnership with Pfizer and the Michael J. Fox Foundation and loaded into Transmart, which actually um, won the Judges Prize and 2015 by ITU um, uh, World. So the other the other experience we have um, is from uh, curating um, a public data and um, an IMI data set called on an IMI project called UBiopred where it, we, it, they took a multi-omic systems biology approach to severe asthma and just, just to show a, a snapshot in time, this was, this was relevant about two years ago, the, the total number of uh, data types and, um, and um, features, the total number of features was, was quite, uh, quite large. So we had to deal with multiple um, clinical data sets. You can see that we had about 620 subjects with about 3,000 features each for the adults and um, half, less than half of that for the pediatric data set. And they were collecting um, from, from various tissues, multiomics, so you had gene expression, protein abundance, lipids, breath metabolites being taken from a, from a large, from different um, tissue types. And this, this as well um, was uh, awarded um, a BioIT Best Practice Awards in Re Research and Drug Discovery back in 2014. So, getting, getting into, the, um, into business. So, how do we uh, curate a uh, public data set? So, as I mentioned, we're going to be using the, the, data, the data set from the Breast Cancer Data Set by Hadzi et al. And so the first thing that we need to do is the clinical data in Transmart, what it can, what it, what it can um, um, entail. It can have any numerical or categorical um, variable. It doesn't, it can't contain high dimensional data. And by high dimensional data, I mean uh, data where from one sample you've met, you've, uh, from one sample you measured thousands of different features. So. Like, like in microarray, for example. And each data value links to a unique subject ID. So you can't, um, Transmart will not accept um, multiple subject, um, identical subject IDs. Um, we, there are some control variables within the clinical data as far as Transmart goes. Um, the clinical, the study ID is required and it's the, it's the central point in the database and it has to be capitalized. Uh, the subject ID um, is, is, uh, needs to be uh, typed in exactly like this and um, is required and it ha can't be longer than 21 characters. The visit name for multiple visits is optional and the data label is optional. 
So some of the control terminology for the summary statistic generation is the age, the, the sex and the race of uh, so the subjects. So, so if we look at the if we look at the um, at the um, geo in in the study in geo, you can see multiple information about it. If you want to download the data set and and um, to to be able to start processing, the best idea is to load to download the soft uh, flam, formatted family files. So these ones down here. Where which contains and I've I've just put, um, left a link on here as well for people to to try it if they want. Um, this will essentially this soft family file contains all of the information that you one would need in order to load the study within Transmart into Transmart. So this is what it would typically look at look like while opening and downloading this the soft family file. So you have um, um, information and metadata on the study up the top rows. The the when you when it says sample characteristics, this is where it contains all of the um, the clinical variables, which which one would simply need to just select and pivot around to create the clinical data file, and lower down in the file it actually contains the gene expression data sets. So in this study, this this specific study, they used uh, microarray gene um, uh, affymetrics microarrays to run the the experiments. So, you need to, as I said, you need to transform the source file into Transmart clinical data file um, you, by making sure that you're aware of the control variables and the terminology. So the the restrictions is that the the the, the, the has to be the study ID um, column. Um, you there has to be unique data uh, per row for the combination of subject ID, visit name, and data label. If there's if this uh, constraint is broken, then the ETL will fail, um, and text data should be kept longer than 255 characters. This was this was quite um, quite uh, obvious when we were curating the Ubiapra data set because some of the clinical data actually contained responses to questionnaires where the users were allowed to to enter in their responses in free text and there's a lot of these times the, the, the study had to the, the response had to be truncated to fit into the database. Um, the ETL um, the changes specific characters so um, so anything any any percent sign will be changed and will appear in the tree as PCT. Plus sign will um, will appear as and um, as well as the ampersand. And less than and is more, less than and more than more than. Um, any any uh, backslashes and, and asterisks are removed, and any Greek symbols um, cannot be uploaded. So and the in the preferred uh, in the preferred um, format is a tab delimited text file for the clinical data. And I'll show you what that looks like in a bit. Um, so essentially, this is this is a this is the file that we took from the the study in Cadiz. And as I told you, if we go back, we sim we simply took the took these um, rows up until where it says sample matrix um, end, um, and and we trans and transformed them, and then made sure that everything was consistent. So this is the um, the file produced and, and ready for loading. So how will it appear? How will the data be displayed in Transmart? So this is this is a um, this is a, a snippet from the clinical data mapping file. So the clinical data mapping file, all you all you need to tell it initially, you just have to give it the column number in the clinical data set. So what A being column one, B being column two, etc. And then you have to then. Um, you, you design the category code. So by designing the category code, you know exactly how the data will appear within Transmart. And um, you can also give a data label. So you can actually completely ignore any of the data labels present in the, in the original data file and just give it your own label. Or you can just retain it. So um, this... Um, the clinical data mapping file has to contain five columns. Um, it has to be also saved as a tab delimited uh, mapping file, and for the for the purposes of the TM data loader, 
we have to it has to be um, the study ID is the prefix of the of the actual um, file name, as in, and then the suffix is mapping file.txt. So you see, so here it um, you have to define the the actual uh, source clinical data file, and you can um, you can um, include multiple ones. As I as I mentioned, as I have been mentioned before, some of the studies are massive. And you will find the clinical data in 40 different files. So you would have to, so you can refer to each individual file, and then you refer to the column number, and then you start building the category code with using an underscore for a space and a plus for a subfolder. And you can also choose to omit specific data file um, columns from within the original clinical data by simply just writing omit there. For the um, for the data label, I'm not going to go into this at the moment. But essentially, you can you can point the data clinical data mapping file to a data um, to a column within the clinical data map file that actually contains your the labels for you. So um, the the default path, um, as as pre, um, in in creating these category codes, so these ones that we said before, if you have multiple visits, the idea is the 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 default um, way that uh, we we tend to deal with this is putting the visit at the end. So you would have category code, the data label, the data value. So let's say we had uh, medical history, we can have medical history a a specific um, medical history variable, and then the the visit name if it would if it was to change. Medical history not being probably the best example here, but I hope you understand what I'm what I'm alluding to. Um, this is the so this would look like clinical clinical endpoints response a yes or a no for example, and week eight being the visit uh, the visit name. You could also um, you can also choose this around. You can change it around and have uh, depending on what you feel is more intuitive and place the visit name in front of the data value. So here you would get the the different um, the different path. And and as I said before, you can um, you can add additional options if um, by using the data label um, column. Um, from from the from this file, the, the data label source. So how do we how do we take expression data? So if we so going back to one of the previous slides where I mentioned the downloading the soft family files, if you scroll down past past the past row, I think it's in this study it's probably row eighty or something like that. Um, you will see that then it starts this the data for um, table is is. Um, the actual gene expression data is, uh, appears. So here we have the samples being represented in each um, each column or each patient represented in a column, and each probe in the microarray data set being, uh, appearing as each individual rows. And um, as as a reminder, that before we pivoted, we pivoted and we had um, each um, each patient appearing. Um, as a row, and in this case, each patient or each sample from each patient is appearing as one column. So, we then for for the when when loading the gene expression data, you again we for TM data loader we save it as the study ID, and the suffix would be the gene expression data, and then the the final suffix. R is used when the data that we're actually loading has not been normalized. So it's it's in raw format. Um, L is used for log2 transformed um, or normalized uh, transformed data. And uh, Z is when uh, Z is used for Z-score normalized data. So depending, this would take, this needs to be, this is a task for the curator that needs to understand how the data has been normalized in the first place, if it has. So the next, the other um, key file is the gene expression data mapping file. So here, this, this, um, this mapping file would contain, should contain the, um, the, stu the subject ID, the platform that is used, so the microarray platform. If we go back to um, the previous slide, 
we can see here we know that this GPL 96 from which we, which corresponds to the Affymetrix human genome U133A array was used. So here, as you, this is represented in this in this column here, the platform, you have the sample code, the subject ID. So this is to, to essentially to link subject ID to sample ID. And if you had a multiple um, um, affymetrics or microarray exp um, expression files, what you can do is that you the subject ID can can be duplicated, but then the sample ID would be different. It, so if we took it from a different tissue, if the tissue, uh, the, the, the data was from a different tissue. Here the study ID remains consistent, so the database knows where, which, which um, microarray data or which high dimensional data are associated with which clinical study. Um, you write the tissue type and you can use the attributes to, to further define the studies. And here you, would, uh, you, you, you define the, the path um, within Transmart, how to display. So this will come up under Transmart, will come up as under biomarker data, um, and it will extract the platform um, node. So here it would be U133A um, for metrics and tissue type, it would appear as breast tumor. So just a graphical representation, here we go. All of what I, what I described before. So, um, and this is how it would appear when, when actually using the data in, within Transmart. So, um, a, few, a few words about how to, how to create a, um, a gene expression data platform. If it's from, if, you, if the gene expression or high dimensional data um, annotation platform is uh, present within Gene Expression Omnibus, you simply just uh, need to, to, to provide the name and the TM data loader tool knows how to go and get all of the information needed. If, if though this is a, a custom um, platform file, you would need to, um, to provide an ID for the for the actual um, data um, platform file, you would have to list the probe IDs, and the gene symbols which are required, the entry gene IDs, so the numerical, the gene title, and the species. Um, in, in loading it, but I'll show you. Uh, this won't be covered. It's covered in the tu in the in the manual that we have, but it's not going to be covered in this tutorial. So. Um, so this, as I mentioned before, you can simply go and download the gene expression, the geo data file, um, annotation file from Gene Expression Omnibus. This is what it looks like, and all you have to tell it is that all you have to do is rename it as, for example, in this case, GPL96. And once you've downloaded it from Geo, you just place it into your folder, and TM Data Loaded handles the rest. So, just um, this was just this is just a graphical um, depiction of the different um, of a custom annotation file. As I mentioned, ID gene symbol being present, entry gene ID, um, and the other information needed. So, the different high dimensional data types that are covered at the moment are gene expression, RNA seq data, um, microRNA. Um, qPCR data, uh, microRNA seq data, protein expression using max spectrometry that was produced using max spectrometry, metabolomic data, copy number variations, um, small variants, and as an asterisk now it can also um, support uh, binary genetic data, um, and um, and essentially for for all in this tutorial we'll be covering gene expression because it's the easiest to understand but exactly the same concepts as the gene expression data apply to the different data types as well so um, let me let me just stop at this stage and ask are there any questions or should I go on If you have a question, you can raise your hand, or you can type a question into the question window, or put a question in the chat window.
Okay, we have two questions that have come in. Um, Stephanie, uh, I currently have an I2B2 instance, version 1.6.03. I don't see the question. Would you like to ask the question directly, Stephanie? I can unmute you. Let's see. Stephanie, uh, you should be unmuted. Would you like yes, to ask you? So I think that my question is, is that I know that our instance is, a, is an older instance, and so I want to be able to use some of these new TransMart um, uh, tools and things like that. I don't know what the ramp up is to take our old instance and try to conform it to these new sections. So I know you guys use the same star schema data model. Um, but as an institution, do you guys come in and help us kind of set this up? Is it all kind of on us? What do you guys see as the way to kind of transition into your tool? I'm really sorry, Stephanie. I didn't. I didn't catch half of that. Um, it was. It was very hard. It, the The line was muted. Could you try and um, ask the question again, please? Uh, yeah. So I don't know if you can hear me any better now. Yes, that's better. Uh, I think that my question is mostly: How do you see people getting their current ITU B two instances? Um, set up and transferred into kind of a transmart data model? Is there uh, an institutional way to do that? Is that uh, kind of left up to the user? Do you have any ideas on how you plan on merging data over from one use into the next? Does that make sense as a question? OK, I get it now. Um, OK, the, the answer I can give you is I, I have no idea. Um, I mean, the first the first uh, the, the first step in this is to nest, is to define how the how the I two B two because there's if you I, I, there was recently a, a symposium at um, where the the integration between I two B two and Transmart was discussed. So if this goes ahead, the short answer is it would should be it should be seamlessly. Um, if not, it would have to. We would have to look at uh, at your data in a systematic way. I'm guessing since it's already an I2B, it's already structured. So um, it, we would we would have to um, essentially look at the data and and make sure that we can we can format it into a transmart ready instance. I'm sorry right. that it wasn't that clear. No, no, that's fine. I just know that we have a, a semi-customized instance of I2B2. It's not straight off the shelf. We kind of implemented a little bit of different um, things to it. And we're really interested in moving over to Transmart, but um, we're also kind of hesitant to make any decisions based on that. We're not really sure if that's something that's going to be our team dedicating that much time to transferring that data. Especially since we have an old version, version 1.6.03, rather than anything okay. fairly up to date. So, <clears throat> yeah, this this is Rudy. I'm and I'm not sure what the answer is either. It's something that you know we would. I'd actually turn to Paul Aviak at the Harvard to, to maybe help us also answer. But it's this is the sort of thing that you know uh, if you were at the I think you were at the meeting in two week two weeks ago, and. Um, you yeah. know, we're, we're really looking to to make this a lot easier. So we're we're hoping that we can. Um, you know, make this easier in the future, but I don't. I, I get. I, don't, I also don't know the answer um, specifically. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And then we have so another. But please another. feel free to reach out separately, and we could we could uh, we could potentially discuss um, some 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 of the uh, ways offline if you wanted to. Yep. And then the other question is from Ha Jing Li from the City of Hope, who uh, was at the, he all presented at the conference. Two weeks ago, um, and is asking about where is the, the URL for the TD um, for the, the data loader and the documentation. Uh, and I think there are links on uh, the Transmart go. website, but you, if you could paste them into the um, okay, so, right there. So, yeah, that's fine. So that okay. So yeah, thank you for that um, that question because this actually is a good little prelude to the next part. So 
The, I've included the TM data loader manual, which is the, the complete manual that you could which you could um, launch here. So essentially, it would look a little something like this. Okay, it's a PDF. It's not an HTML, but I'll, you can get the um, you can get the PDF version from here. As, as well as you can download and the fullest instructions are contained on, on our GitHub account. So if you logged on to a TM Data Loader GitHub, it has full instructions on how to, how to load, install, how to load the um, TM Data Loader and how to prepare the data for loading and how to actually launch it. And this is actually going to be the part of, that I'm going to be covering now. So I think I think this is a perfect um, a perfect uh, step, stage to to move on to the next um, topics. So as I said, the TM data loader manual can be found um, at this website um, with using this link. And um, Rudy, I'll work with you just to, to make sure that it's more yeah. visible on the um, on the um, foundation website as well. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, and here is the GitHub URL where you can get further instructions. So the manual is in need of, of a slight update, but if, you, if you're following the GitHub, you will fee, see all of the updates live. So um, this is just, the, I, could, I could run it live if you want. I mean, it's, it's really, really easy. So I, I, may, I went an exercise where I installed the Transmart 16.1 using the scripts on my own um, Ubuntu VM on using VirtualBox uh, from Oracle. And so once you're in the uh, Linux environment, you're in your, um, in your home folder, you simply, the dollar signs just represent commands. So you can perform a git clone of the, of the, um, of the TM data of the URL, which will download um, all of the data into, um, into into your machine, you then uh, move uh, into the TM data loader directory, where you simply just um, do uh, dot forward slash uh, gradlu deploy jar, which then um, which then this uh, builds the TM data loader for you and and is ready. So after you've run these commands. And this is the TM data loader, how it would appear on a, uh, on a Lubuntu desktop. And then after you've run the, the, the previous command here, the gradlu deploy jar, you would, pres you would uh, be presented with a 15.6 uh, meg um, jar file for loading. Let me just point out that I, if I'm not mistaken, and I may be, but I think this is the lightest and smallest uh, t um, Transmart ETL um, tool there is. So I, I, I don't remember if most of the ones I've used in the past are much, uh, much larger. So if, if space is of the issue on your server, then I would highly recommend using the TM data loader. And Yanni, just to interrupt you quickly, um, the manual, the link for the manual and the GitHub are now pasted in the uh, chat window uh, for everyone to see. And thank you, Ward. Great. Thanks, Ward. So. Um, so we we then after you've we've um, deployed and we've created the um, the TM data loader. The next step we want to do is we have to apply some required database changes. And this is again you don't need to do do it yourself. Um, so um, hashes mean comments. So the, how to apply the database changes? You simply have to change your user and become Postgres. Just just type in this command and enter your 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 Transmart password or whatever your user password is, you would uh, you then have to run the SQL scripts as this user as you use Postgres. So then you that you go into the into the desired folder. You just simply press this, assuming that you've you've um, installed it in the same way that I have, based on the automated install scripts, and you you then just run these uh, three commands, which will um, create all of the necessary database changes needed. And then you just pr um, press press Control D on the command line to become back as a Transmart user. So um, after this, what we're going to do is um, we're going to create a data folder where we're going to use it to place all of the data of the files to to load into the into Transmart. 
So in this case, I just right-clicked and created a new folder. So I'm going a little bit more graphical now to start with the command lines. Um, and I just gave the, I, for this example, I named the folder ETL directory. So if we go into the next, you can see the ETL directory has been created. So the next thing is we, we leave that and we leave it there for, for, for and you'll see where it will come back to it. The next step is to configure the TM data loader. So we need to again to right click on the root folder on our home folder and create a new folder. And in this time, we, there's no examples. It had, it had the folder has to be named .tm underscore etl. And please note that the dot prefix is very important, so the so that the uh, TM data loader knows where to look for the, for its configuration. Essentially, um, the, when when you when you then look at it, the, when you go back to the folder, you won't see the folder that you created because it's a hidden folder. But you can either put, go File View and show hidden files, or just press Control H, and it will appear. So after you've pressed Control H, here is here is the .tm etl that we created before. So here you can see other hidden system files that Linux uses. I wouldn't suggest you um, changing or deleting any of these. So the next step is we, we navigate to the TM data, fol data loader folder, which we've previously downloaded from GitHub. And we, we you simply right click and copy the, copy, the config.groovy file, and we navigate back to the folder that we created in this step. Um, in this step, and we paste it into the folder. So we then double click on the config.groovy file, and it, um, if not if any, anything is, everything should be fine. So it would open with, gedit, which is a native uh, GUI editor for Ubuntu. So you have, um, this is the, the TM data loader exactly as it appears when I copied it. So if, you, if you've if you done all the steps that I've done, you should see exactly the same um, folder. And now we need to edit this uh, uh, file to, um, to reflect our, um, the configuration in the, the machine. So since, as I said, we're using Postgres, we'll have to, We'll have to, as it says, we'll have to um, um, comment or delete these two lines uh, for Postgres. So comments would be double double forward slashes. Here we would need to change five and um, the port to five four three two for Postgres. And and for the ETL directory, you you may be we have to put the, the directory that we created in the previous. So if it, if it, if everything has been configured correctly, it should look like this. Once you've uh, once you've corrected it, so we've commented out the two lines. We've set the default Postgres port, the local host. This is all assuming that you've this is all on your own computer, and the data directory is the data directory that we created in the previous step. So. How do we format the data for loading with TM Data Loader? Well, I went through this before, just to reiterate at this step. So the, um, the data um, and mapping files should be arranged in a folder structure, and the study name and the study ID. So what? So the study ID being the the last part. So just always remember the stu your study ID is the last part of the of the of the file name of the folder name. So here you have breast cancer Hadiz and the study ID. And here in the clinical data to upload, we have um, breast cancer, the mapping file, the, the, the actual data file. And then we have, as I described before, gene expression data, the subject to sample mapping for, um, data, and the added platform annotation. And each study can be placed in the nested ETL folders according to the desired study path. In this case, we're just loading it into ETL directory public studies. So let me let me see if I can if I can switch over live now to to my little one working here. Okay, give me a minute. So, 
in the in so this is the ETL directory as I told you. So I've created the ETL directory as as we said. I've placed the the, the I've made a folder called public studies because this is what I want the top level of of my um, to appear in Transmot should be. And then I loaded and then I named this breast cancer. And um, okay, this one. Okay, I'm run. I'm using a different data file here. Apologies for this. This was a different. Um, I've got two VMs running. So anyway, this this is the same structure. So um, you would see uh, this is just a different study that we loaded. So if we looked at the clinical data, you have all of the um, all of the information um, appearing. So it'd probably be easier if I opened it for you in with Office Calc, which should be fine. So this is the actual structure, as I as I mentioned before, of the data file. And here we can we see that we're already planning to omit the hospital from which it came. Um, the column mapping, the mapping file that is needed. We go into and we look at uh, again the column mapping file. So here, as described, I'm giving it the file name. I'm also um, defining the different uh, nodes. I'm giving it the column number from within the original data file and giving the, the data label that I wish to, to appear. Then if we go into the gene expression data, here we have, I, um, I can see here from just by the file name, this is raw data and I'm going to attempt to open it. This should take a little bit longer to open but not too long. So the clinical data file would look would look like well, you can see it's loading. Just give it a few seconds. Here we go. So this is the typical structure of a gene expression file. We can see that each sample uh, is represented as a as a single column, and each probe as a as a single uh, row. And then, if I look at the um, the actual sample map, subject to sample mapping file, I can see here that I've, I'm defining the study ID, and then I'm giving the the um, the subject ID being this one. The sample ID being this one, the platform that was used, the breast cat, to the the tissue type, and here is the category code. The I have not filled in the site ID, the attributes at one and two in this case. And as a reminder, this is the the platform annotation file, which is purely just downloaded off Gene Expression Omnibus. You have to you could you you need to do nothing to it. So um, you can see this is the this is the typical structure as, as you would download it from within. Gene expression omnibus directly, and here we'd start to see the actual um, the actual uh, data file. Maybe I could. Uh, I don't need to show you here. I don't think, but you can download it and see it. So um, that said, where we go, the next step to do is actually run uh, is actually using the uh, the ETL process. Um, the actually using the tool. So here you would simply have to go and, and just type in Java minus jar tm tmetl dot jar, and it will start loading the the studies which are in the directory that you've given it. Um, if you want to see all available options, um, you can use the minus h command, which will tell you what options you have. And it has just some brief tool um, information. You can actually delete a study by just saying Java, um, just running the same command, saying delete study by ID, and all you have to give it is your study ID. And in this case, it would have been just GSC 25066. And you can also delete, um, choose to delete the study by the path. So if you're not not quite sure what your study ID is, you can then um, delete the study by the path. Um, you can also choose to move a study from, for example, public studies to private studies. And at this stage, let me just go and just um, go on to the. So 
if we if you access our GitHub that is included in the in the instructions, you can see all of the different um, all of the different options that are given. I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, pay too much attention to these. These are more of an expert options. But when you can you can delete the um, you can delete the study by a deep path as I mentioned. You can force a start, so you can actually force the TM data loader to start even though another instance is already running. So this would be um, it's not advisable, but you can do it. So this would be if two different users are logged onto the same machine and want to invoke um, the same instance um, the uh, the TM data loader. Um, it also you can get a um, you can use the interactive option so you can actually see the progress bar. You can move the study. Um, you the no rename what it actually does and you'll see it, this in the next slide. Once the, the TM data loader has finished, what it will do then um, it will have um, ch altered your actual folders and it will come and put append a uh, done prefix or a fail. Uh, prefix depending on if it was successful if it was not successful so by looking at this uh, this particular option the uh, no rename you don't um, after what if after the TM data loader is finished it does nothing to the folder structures um, it can you can also um, get it to this is the visit name first that uh, we would describe and there are some other very expert um, uh, options which we, we, we intend to include so you can actually um, um, load serial data using TM data loader and you can also um, iteratively um, incrementally load data using the, the loader and the and the scripts and the, the the uh, information is provided on our on our ET all tool, tool manual. So um, that said, let's say say let's say we launched the um, the ETL tool and uh, we we think that it's it's uh, it's all been successful. That that may be true, but let's just check to see if the data is loaded correctly and it's cons and there is consistency. So what I this is a just by loading this specific study, you can then log on to your own Transmart instance running on your Ubuntu. So here I'm just logging on, and I can I can see that the data is appearing in the tree, um, in the analyze tree. So that's the first step, and we know that it's that this is a good sign. The um, the second check, and this is more of a of a more of a rule of thumb one of a manual check. You drag. I would suggest that you drag a variable with very few subjects. So in this case, the um, angio invasion, a positive for angio invasion, is only six. Um, luckily for them, six uh, ladies. Um, and we drag we drag this node, this variable, into subset one. The reason I'm doing it is because it's only got six um, subjects, so it will be much quicker. Um, and then we click on summary statistics. Once we um, we click on the summary statistics, so the summary statistics should be displayed correctly. So that's another a good sign that the clinical data has all been loaded correctly. So next, we're going to try and see if the if the gene expression data has been was loaded. So now we're going to click on the advanced workflow here, and um, and select the heat map analysis from the advanced workflow menu. The next step we're going to do is we're just going to drag um, we're just going to drag the breast uh, the breast tumor node into the into the high dimensional uh, box. Click the high dimensional data button here, and just apply the selections without doing anything else. You just you don't need to do anything for this simple test and just run. There's a button below that says run and just run it. So if you've if this is um, if this is what appears below. It's a great success, um, and with that said, I think, and I could just show you a couple of m more tips before we end. Um, so, if I go back to my actual uh, Transmart, my Ubuntu Transmart, which is running, so a really good way of being able to. Um, to check the process is by using this little command here. So here I'm actually running an, an ETL process as well as I'm giving this tutorial and I'm giving it live. So this is the the, the H top 
um, command and what if you all you need to do is go onto your command line once you're loading and just fire up HTOP. If you're if everything is going okay, you could see the actual uh, resource um, allocation and you can see that post the, the TM data loader is the one um, process that's running that's using the most commands. And as I pro as I proved in the in the pre in the slides, this is basically going to end result in the in the in the in the study appearing within Transmart. And with that said, I'd like to thank you and open the floor to uh, for questions. <clears throat> Thanks, Yanni. Uh, we did have a hand raised, Alina. I'm sorry, I, I missed it earlier. Uh, would you like to ask your question? Oh, you're, you should be unmuted. Sure, I can ask it. Go ahead. You hear me? Okay. So my question would be about the uh, how do we handle the methylation data? Um, I, basically, I have two questions about it. So if we have a methylation data that uh, has a lot of um, probes that they do not have uh, the specific assigned to them gene symbol, um, would it influence the performance of the loaded platform if we leave um, those probes um, just empty cells? And the other question would be if uh, the data itself is a normalized B values, which are basically raw data, but if we load it as raw data, then um, the values that are below one makes the heat map having these um, white white spots because um, the logarithm uh, logarithm of two would be calculated from the raw data. Can we um, use the um, methylation? Data values, normalized data as a logarithm, giving the name for the expression data file as L. Okay, so you're you're describing. So the question is on on methylation data using, um, um which platform? Um, like, I think it's GPL uh, thirty five something. I don't remember now what. Are you referring to the Illumina platform, the yeah. 450k array? Right. Yeah. Okay. So um, this hasn't been covered, and I haven't prepared for this and this um, in this uh, tutorial, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I please, if you if you want, you can send me the question offline, and I could I could uh, configure it out and get back to you, and probably. Post it to the to the to the other attendees as well. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I couldn't answer that directly now. That's a, I assume uh, it's an easy question. <laughs> I've dealt I've dealt with this before, but I've dealt with it in, in using um, um, the, the the kettle ETLs. I haven't actually tested that personally on the methylation data, mm -hmm. on or using the TM data loader. At the moment. Okay, so I'll send you my question. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and uh, another question from Ha Jing Li. Um, it's in the uh, question window, but I'll unmute Ha Jing. But can I add a new omic data set to an existing study in Transmart, such as I already have a study with microarray data, but I want to later add RNA seq? Yes, you can. That's that's the simplest way. Um, that's really easy to do. Ha Jing, you're just the, yeah. Okay, go ahead. You're unmuted, Hajin. Do you want to ask, add anything to the question? No, Mike. OK. Yes. Yeah, so um, as I said, it's yes. The answer is yes. You just simply add, add the, the new folder. You launch the ETL process again, and it loads the RNA-seq data, as well as the microarrays. OK. Great. Well, um, if there are any questions, we will. Um, I will have I can this. See one, oh, I can see one more question by um, Sapi there, I think, as well. Oh, she's still on the line. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. What kind of RNA data can be uploaded using the TM data loader RFPKM? That is that is your own choice. Actually, you can you can you can choose you can choose if it's uh, um, which type of what um, how the RNA seq data expression is represented. 
um, and it will and transmart will see it exactly as the say and the table template will see it as an expression value. So you can use um, any of the three um, types that you that you um, that you wrote in your questions every day. So can can you hear me? Yes, go yes, ahead. Okay, so the thing is that, for example, for microarray, we have this LR, uh, I mean, uh, if it's uh, a log transform or if it's normalized or not, do we have the same thing for uh, rna stick data? Do, you, do we need to specify for TM data loader that what type of data we are uploading? Wow, okay. Um, I wonder if that is a good question, and I don't, I can't answer it, but I'm wondering if um, Siramon is on the line and she could um, help out with this question. Uh, Siramon, if you're there, you're unmuted. Hi, uh, can you repeat the question? So my question is just what type of RNA stick data we can upload you can, using TM data loader and how we can specify that. So I mean for microarray we can specify with R, L, if it's log transform, if it's normalized or not. Is it the same for RNA stick then how we can specify that? In the manual I couldn't find any specific things for RNA stick so if you know. So um, I'm thinking. So it depends on the format and the tables that you um, specify the RNA seq into. Um, because as Yanis mentioned, if you normalize the RNA seq um, as similar to the expression data, the gene expression data, you can also upload them into the gene expression data table. So it will be the same way as we upload the microarray gene expression with the same options. If we use a different um, uh, table for the RNA seq, I from I, I don't personally do. Uh, let's see if Natalie are also on the line. She can also help with that. <laughs> um, okay. But yes, it's, we can take a look at that chapter that you refer to again and and send you a follow up. Okay, good. I mean, my point here is just we can upload. I mean, it doesn't matter for TM data loader, but for TransSmart, when we are doing something with the data, it is important to that TransSmart knows what type of data it's working with, I guess. So, I mean, somehow yes, we should tell exactly. TransSmart that. Yeah. And yeah, my so, other so the TM data loader is, is, you know, just follow whatever the tables are available yeah. for, for Transmar. Um, yeah. And for, I am um, like, for example, for proteomics, we, I think we also have the same options, um, you know, whether it's normalized or locked to and things like that already. So I believe it's the same for an ASIC, but, uh, but we want to double check. Um, but again, it depends on the table that you upload the data to and, and what type of, is, is, is it also tied into the transmart um, capabilities itself. Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah, I have one other quick question that uh, till now I know that it's not possible to upload, uh, I mean incremental uploading. So I mean if you have the clinical data for example for a specific study, we, have, we should have everything and upload everything uh, at one time. Is it still the case, or no? And that's that's where I, that's exactly. I didn't I didn't go into the into depth of the incremental data loading, but um, the TM data loader you can um, you can do incremental data loading, so you don't have to delete all of the study and reload it again. Okay, good, good to know. Thank you. Yep, there are um, kind of options when you need to uh, run the incremental data loading. Um, so Yanis, maybe we need to check whether it's visible on the GitHub um, for that for those options. If not, um, we you know we we are in process of updating the manual again to add those options because these are recently added. Okay. Yeah, they're not included in here, but we we do know they exist, so we'll in, we'll include them on the on the GitHub as a live manual. Okay, cool. Well, thank you. Okay, great. Well, thank you. Thanks, everyone, for jumping in, and uh, Yanni, thank you for a great job. Um, and uh, as I said, we will have the recording 
uh, and the slides um, posted on the website uh, shortly. So with that, I will uh, end the session and thanks everyone. Thank you.